Happy Father's Day. I sent a card, but I didn't get any today. My name is Victor Ashley, and I'm a real estate agent out in Seattle, Washington. This is how you get a hold of me. Also, leave a comment below. The snarkier, the better. And while you're at it, hit subscribe because I cover a lot of different areas, topics, zip codes, and concepts that might be important to you. And I can be talking about your neighborhood or even your situation next. Let's talk about one that I get uh, asked about occasionally. Uh, but this is the Bellevue, Washington area. And inside the greater Seattle area uh, in Washington, there's two different areas. Um, one of them is uh, obviously Seattle. And then the other one's the east side and the biggest zip code and uh, the biggest uh, city inside of uh, the east side is Bellevue, Washington. So we're going to actually take a deep dive into the Bellevue, Washington right now. And uh, thank you very much uh, for following along. I appreciate your guys' uh, support. So let's get into this one right now. So Bellevue, Washington is located about seven and a half, maybe eight miles uh, to the east of the Seattle Space Needle. It is... Uh, there's a couple of different highways that it connects with, uh, but there's two floating bridges that connect it with Seattle. Uh, that's the I-90 and also uh, the 520 bridge. And as well, uh, the 405 uh, goes north to south through uh, the heart of Bellevue itself, as well as uh, I-90 goes all the way through it. This is kind of the main area inside of the uh, Washington area, the uh, greater Seattle zone. Uh, besides Seattle. So a lot of commerce happens over here. And uh, specifically, we're talking about the zip codes inside of Bellevue proper. Uh, Clyde Hill and Medina have their own cities, so they're not included in this report. And this butts right up against uh, uh, Kirkland and Redmond also. So I just wanted to give you a quick idea of what we're actually covering today. And I really appreciate you going into this. So let's get into my math. And if you ha haven't noticed, I've been uh, labeling my actual uh, tab here as Victor's Math. I will send this to you if you have any questions. Uh, just hit me up, hit subscribe, or hit a just uh, give me a like or a comment saying, hey, I'd like to get this and I'll get it out to you. So let's get into what's available for purchase right now inside of the Bellevue area as of today, uh, Father's Day, uh, Sunday, June 18th. Right now, approximately what's available on the market is $953 a square foot. Now, the homes that are out there, they vary in sizes right now, uh, but they go all the way from you know a $400,000 condo all the way up to, well, actually about an $800,000 condo all the way up to $2.6 million. Uh, the, the time on market's roughly 56 days on market right now, three and a half bedrooms, uh, two baths, uh, two and a half baths, and just under 3,000 square feet. Now, there are some anomalies in here, so they're really hard for me to point out. Um, and again, this takes me about two hours to go through this. So there are some slips in vacant land inside of the Keys area of Bellevue uh, that I removed because they're priced per square foot. We're calculating into the 10,000. So I removed those. So if you have any questions on that, you can hit me up. Just hit me up right here, uh, as I said below and I'll be happy to get into it for you. Well, now you have an idea of what's available on the market. Let's actually go into the May over May sold. So let's go into last May, May 2022. Uh, inside of Bellevue, there was approximately, uh, there was exactly 200 sales inside of the Bellevue area. The price per square foot came out to $785 a square foot. And the average size house, uh, the average cost of the house was 1.3, uh, one and three quarter million dollars. Uh, the price, uh, the days on market was a, about eight days, and that was a three bedroom, two and a half bath, and 2,200 square feet roughly. So again, that that was on average a one million three quarter, a one and three quarter million dollar house, so 1.776 million bucks. Uh, but let's compare it to this May because again, there was 200 that were sold last year and this year, uh, there was only 152 sold. Uh, and on top of that, the price per square foot went down actually to $645 a square foot. And the average house actually came out to $1.4 million, uh, just under 1.5 million bucks. And our, um, time on market was instead of 10, 10 days on market, it was 27 days on market. And approximately the size was the same. And when I averaged the two uh, sizes together, so now I have a good apples to apples comparison, I came out with an adjusted size of the sales as well as uh, the decrease that you've seen this year 
uh, from May 2022 to May 2023. So last year for May 2022, the adjusted size actually came out to $1.778 million as a purchase price when I adjusted the size uh, to our average size of 22.66. Uh, 20, uh, 2,266 square feet multiplied by the square feet. And again, what we got this year for the actual completed sales came out to $1.461 million. What this means is it was a $317,000 decrease in the equity of the homes being sold right now at 17.85% as a decrease. Now, I did want to check my math on this, so I went into the actual uh, MLS and I pulled up uh, some of the information that was available, and I did see quite a bit of change on here. And as I did show, uh, and they don't break it out uh, by actual uh, cities, but only by zip codes, and I did see some decreases in here by 24%, as well as a 20% in another zip code as well. So I did want to check my math on that because it seemed like a lot. Uh, but it's actually, this is what it was. So there was a $317,000 equity change, and that was about 18% decrease. Now, that might sound like a buying opportunity to a lot of you out there, uh, but what we're really looking at is we're looking at a uh, mortgage uh, at approximately $9,000 a month. Now, this is not typical for a lot of people, and if you notice in my document right here, I actually took the income range out of this because the income range is too hard to calculate at this time uh, because we're talking jumbo loans at that time. So uh, just, uh, just for everyone's uh, edification and just so you know, I do know that I'm trying not to make this a channel where I only review the high-end homes. But as you can tell, inside of the Bellevue area, if you're actually going to be purchasing, the average homes are going to be at a price point that is above the market average in this area. Also, that changed our rent to buy or our buy to rent uh, ratio because the rents right now out there are $5,000 a month if you were going to go out and rent one of these single family homes at this point. Uh, but the mortgages, like I just talked about, were close to $9,000 a month. So what you're looking at is 175 percent uh, change in your rent to buy. But I also want to point out that the more the majority of people that actually rent inside of Bellevue, and this is also anecdotal, um, but the majority of people that actually rent inside of Bellevue, uh, they actually work other, um, they, they are usually some sort of uh, tech uh, VP or some sort of executive or, you know, head of, um, you know, just the higher earners are inside the Bellevue area. And a lot of people that actually, you know, do the, you know, day-to-day -day work or, you know, they're actually living somewhere else or they're in an apartment somewhere inside of Bellevue at a lower cost. So I wanted to point this out because, uh, as I said before, you know, I'm trying not to make this a channel only about the high-end uh, earners at this point. And again, you know, the reason why I do this is because I want to give you an idea of what is out there inside of some of the areas inside of Bellevue or inside of Washington itself and the greater Seattle area. There's a lot more than just the Space Needle and, you know, the Ferris wheel out here. And, you know, I, I try to make this a channel where it's not in it, not just the, uh, hey, here's the seven uh, nicest things to do inside of Seattle. So, you know, as usual, I want to thank you for, uh, you know, working with me today and I hope you have a fantastic Father's Day.